Hi and welcome back to Garden Ninja. Now a few of you online have been asking me to do a demonstration of how to prune apple trees and it seems to have a few of you complex. So let's get our jackets on, get out in the garden and I'm going to show you exactly how to prune your apple trees for even more apples and success this year. Come on, let's get cracking. If you've not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you hit the red subscribe button below where you'll get access to over 120 garden design hint tip snacks. And best of all, it's free, so subscribe today. So pruning apple trees and any young fruit tree is essential to make sure that your tree grows into the correct form. If you don't prune it, what you're going to end up with is loads of fresh growth year after year that becomes congested, rubs against each other, may damage each other and it also means that you're probably going to get less fruit because the tree is quite happily pumping out all of its efforts into new growth rather than producing fruit which is delicious for us to eat and also looks rather nice too. So pruning is essential, but a lot of you seem really scared and timid when it comes to pruning fruit trees. And I think the problem with that is that when you first plant a new fruit tree, you want it to succeed. So you leave it there and you think, oh, it's putting on loads of new growth. Let's just see what happens. But I'm going to show you today why pruning is going to be your best friend in making sure that your new fruit trees look absolutely fantastic and provide you with loads of apples. So come on. So the best time to prune your apple trees is winter and that's for two reasons. Firstly, all of the sap and energy has gone down to the base of the plant because they're dormant. But the second reason is that there's no leaves so you can see exactly what you need to do to your apple tree to nip it into shape. And I'm going to explain that to you now. So it's really important to understand how pruning works and how the fruit tree is going to react. You may think that when you prune things off a tree, it will damage it or weaken it, but that's not the case. Winter pruning will actually reinvigorate most trees and shrubs. And what we're doing is when we prune something off a tree and we say take off part of this branch here, we're basically signalling to the tree to divert its energy elsewhere. So it's going to take all the hormones and go juice that it was pushing through that stem somewhere else. And it's worthwhile always coming back to that in your mind. Whatever we take off, it's going to divert the energy away from wherever it was going to the next set of buds or next lateral. And think about that as you're starting to prune because it allows us to work out if we snip this off here, it will then force that bud down there to break or that lateral to grow out even further. If you keep that in mind, you can't go too wrong. So when we're making pruning cuts, we need to make sure we've got clean, sharp secateurs and we make them at a neat angle. So I don't want to get too close to that, that I end up damaging this branch next to it. But I'm going to take it off just there so it'll leave just a tiny amount, like that. So the first thing to do is stand back and look at your apple tree. Spot any crossing, rubbing or damaged wood and that needs to be nipped out first. Once you've done that, stand back again. Now here's another prime example, look at that. That's going to start rubbing either against there or upwards here. So I'm going to take that off all the way back to that main branch. And I need to be careful, I think that's the best angle to take it at. So snip and off it goes. Now have a look at this. This is damaged material, you can see because the actual um, branch is starting to sever and split from here. Hello Barry. And that's due to a few reasons. One, it's probably had far too much fruit on which has caused this branch to, to, to bow down and then become damaged. Or the second is heavy frost, wind, snow damage, but that's just going to get infected. Oh. Ugh. There we go. See how that's nice and neat now. And this damaged wood, if you see it there, that would have just peeled away, look. So I'm going to demonstrate that on this young apple tree here. So at the moment we've got these two branches and they're growing upwards and upwards and upwards. And if I don't prune them this winter, they'll just keep growing up and I'll end up with this big awkward V. But what we want 
is to prune this, to send the energy down these branches to start to break out some laterals so that you've got more growth on the sides because that will mean more fruit and it will give the tree a more balanced shape. Remember, we're aiming for this open goblet like an outstretched palm. So for this example, I'm only going to cut off maybe a quarter because I just want to start to break some of these out. So I'm going to cut off about here, sharp cut, snip. And then on this side over here, probably the same again, a bit lower because I want this to become the main leader. So I'll take that one off about there. So this apple tree here is a really good example of what happens if you just leave your apple trees and don't do any formative pruning. We've got two leaders here, also known as dual leaders. So with most fruit trees, what we want is one leader and then we want laterals or side shoots and branches to stem off from that and then we've got this really nice open shape. If I just leave this here, both of these are going to compete, they're going to keep growing up. You can already see that they're about to get tangled. Now, it sounds brutal, but I need to take off the weaker of the two of these leaders. Now, looking at it, it's going to be this one. It's the shorter of the two, it's coming out at a weird angle. Now, it might sound brutal, but I'm going to take it right back to the main trunk, because if I cut it off down here, the chances are it's still going to send up loads of energy um, and compete with the other one. And you can spot a dual leader because it looks like a V-shape. You'll have two long stems that are shooting up and they're both competing. And you need to remove one of them, usually the weaker. So let's do that now. So we can see here that this is the leader that I want to keep. This is the stronger of the two. This is the weaker. But rather than cutting it up here, which will then send out side shoots, which ultimately may compete, I'm going to take it right the way back. And it may look totally brutal, but it's really necessary. Nice clean cut on an angle away from the next set. So this is a good example of the pruning I did last year and how it's formed its shape this year. So you probably see down there there's a, a pruning scar because there was a leader that was coming up and I cut that out to leave the energy for this one. So all that effort's been diverted into here and into here. I also cut the top of this one off so you can see that we've got these laterals now that are pushing out, so it's forming that shape. So because I removed part of it here, it forced the energy down. Because I removed that, it stopped the competing leader, but also pushed the energy into these two other laterals down below. For this year, I'm going to leave it because it's in good shape. Nothing's crossing, nothing's damaged, and it's starting to get that open goblet shape. So this is a prime example of a rubbing branch and you can see it's about to rub there and get all tangled. Now I don't want to take it all the way back to here because if I do that then I'm going to lose some of the potential. But if you see there's all these little tiny dormant buds and what I'm going to do is pick one that's facing this way rather than that way and by cutting say here all this energy now next year will be focused on that bud that will grow out and form a new branch almost like that that then grows outwards and that's a much better way to form the tree rather than taking it all the way off which means we lose all the potential if i was to leave it on that would just rub so we need to get rid of it so i've just finished pruning this apple tree as you can see it's got one main leader everything else underneath it is branching off nicely nothing's crossing nothing's rubbing i can get my hands through it it just looks nice neat and tidy and that's all you need to do it's not difficult and even if you end up with a pretty awkward apple tree in a year or two you can prune it back to glory you've got to be bold and brave so let's recap on what you need to do with your young apple trees to get them into the best shape Make note of any branches that are crossing, rubbing or are damaged and they're the first ones to sniff out. So the next thing we want to do is to reduce the leaders. Take off maybe an inch or two and that will push energy further down into your apple tree and then form this open network of branches which is what we really want. And the last thing to do is to make sure that if you've got two leaders that you remove one of them because you only ever want one and everything else grows off that main leader. So I'm just taking off, like I said, maybe an inch or two off these top leaders here. Just to help focus the energy back down, it will start to then send off side shoots. 
But this is a really good example of kind of an open goblet shape. The leader here was removed by me about two years ago. As you can see, it's formed this kind of like hand shape. There's loads of space and air between all the branches. We've got all these buds that are going to break and hopefully then turn into fruit bearing spurs. I did get some fruit in this last year, um, so it was quite successful. But you can kind of get the idea of this open palm. You can see through it, you can get to stuff. Nothing's rubbing, nothing's causing a drama. And that's really all that you're aiming for. And the reason why we do it when they're young is that it's far easier to train a tree of two or four years than it is to take on like a 30 year old apple tree and start trying to get it back into shape. It's a lot easier. So there we have it, my easy pruning guide for young apple trees. And it really will pay dividends if you manage to bite the bullet and prune them whilst they're young to create that beautiful open goblet shape. You'll get more fruit and you'll get far more satisfaction out of your apple trees than if you just bury your head in the sand and leave them to their own devices. If you've liked this video, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the bell for notifications for more from me, the Garden Ninja. I've got over 130 garden design hints, tips and hacks to help you make your garden awesome. I'm going inside for a brew because it's absolutely freezing. Happy gardening.